Welcome back to PJ Chain Design. This is PJ. Today I would like to talk about how to arrange the text on a signal ring, especially the one on the top into a circle and also the one follow the curvature on the side of the ring. Are you ready? Let's get started. Today's tutorial, I would like to explain how to arrange the text on a flat surface and also the text on this curved surface. And it happened to be used a lot into the signal ring. So I'm just going to use a signal ring as an example. This ring has been explained multiple times on how to make it. If you are interested in that, I will put a playlist for the signal ring uh, on this right top corner here. And so you can take a look on other video. But let's talk about the text. Now. Now, if you are going to flow anything, the text into this circle and it has happened to the flat surface, it's quite easy. So let me kind of hiding all those texts first to start with. First of all, we need to define it where you are going to have the text. I simply just going to draw a circle snapping into any of the center. And I wanted to draw something look like this. So this will be the area that I'm going to flow the text. I also going to bring this curve to top of my the surface and you can get it really close. And it doesn't matter if it is completely aligned to the top. All right, we need to know how long is this piece right here. So I'm going to use the length command. And it tell me like this is 25.305 millimeter. I'm just going to make a copy there. Then I'm going to draw a straight line right here. And it's exactly the same length and hit the left click. And then I'll get uh, something like this. This is to represent this circle if it has been straightened flat and that will be the same length there. So I'm going to type some text right here. In the text box, text object, uh, whenever you have something coming up, you can type the text. Uh, I would like to use something really bold. It's easier for the casting. So I'm going to type it text arrangement here. Okay. Uh, and also I would like to actually use the capital. So text. arrangement here. All right. And then you can uh, decide how tall you want it. I simply wanted to have about two millimeter. The thickness doesn't have to be too thick either. So one millimeter. Let's take a look how it look. All right. Apparently this is too big there. So I simply just going to make them smaller, get it close to here. All right. We might need to do some adjustment by make them a little bit narrower in order to fitting all of them in there. So first of all, let's go ahead to scale it by 1D scale. And I'm going to snap in anywhere at the end point, holding the shift and bring it down to somewhere inside of that line there. Okay. The second thing is we need to arrange this two here. Now this has been grouping together. This is really important. You have to ungroup it. So let's go ahead to ungroup it first. Now we can flow back to here. The command we are going to use is called flow. And we are going to pick up all the object, which is all the text and the base curve. We're going to pick up one of the point here and we're just going to click it everywhere there. Notice that the text is being stretched on the top. As you can see, the T on the top is bigger and it's kind of tapered down to the bottom. If that work for you, that will be fine. If it doesn't work for you, let's do one more time. We're going to use the flow command one more time. And we're going to pick up the object and hit enter. Now you have some option right here. If you want the rigid equal no, then it will stretch whatever close to the outside circle. It will be a little bit bigger. So let's go ahead to change this rigid equal yes. And let's select the base curve, which is this one. And the target curve is right there. As you can see, now the text is flow better. It doesn't deform it. The distance, you might need to adjust it. For example, the A is really close to the R. And if that is the case, you can move it here if you record a history. So let me show you one more time with the history is on. I'm going to use the flow command 
and I'm going to click on record history here on the bottom and then rigid make sure is yes and I'm gonna click it right here and also click it right here now if I feel like the R and the A is too close and I want to move the A instead of moving right here and I'm going to move it here and I'm going to move it just a little bit to show you the part is actually moving too. So you can kind of maybe the end need to moving more to the right side as well. And so you can kind of shift it a little bit to get what you like. All right. So that is the first way it's quite easy to arrange anything on the top. Once you're done, uh, if you don't need to move arrangement there, you can move this one down and then either your Boolean union, if you take a look at my render view and there will text coming out or you can Boolean difference. So that will be recess text. All right, let's take a look on the second option right there. I wanted to have a text coming here and it's not just a square. I actually want a different shape. So I simply just going to draw a square first and then I'm going to pick up this and scale it down 1D scale on the side. Now, if I'm moving this align to the center, to the vertical center, I'll get something like this. Now I wanted to adjust them and make sure them they are the size that I like, the length and everything, it look nice. All right, so now if you take a look on this, and this is quite important right there, if you take a look on this, and this is a seam right here. All right, so what that means is I'm going to make the copy Control C and Control V. So I have two of them and then I'm going to hiding one of them there. Now I'm going to pick up this one to show you the way you shouldn't do. Let's go ahead to trim the whole things right here. And notice that I have those part left and we only need one of them there. So I'm going to delete this one. Notice that there's a seam right here and this seems going to cause the problem. I have a similar video that I made a long time ago talking about this part and the questions a lot is why am I do the create UV curve it only coming into one side. Let me show you what that means. We're going to create the UV curve and then we pick up this one. You are only allowed to click on one side. And when you do that, it only gives you that little part there. That's because there's a seam right there. And there's a seam it's coming out how we make that signal ring. So having a UV curve created and flow it back, it doesn't work for us. So the way to fix that, I'm going to duplicate it. The age of this entire piece and then once we have it I'm going to delete them now if you join this and this into one curve it's still there's a seam right here how do I know it if you are able to explode it them into the two or more part that means there will be always a seam there so what we're gonna do is we're gonna pick up this and this we want to join them they become one and to make it permanent into one single curve we're going to do the rebuild we're gonna pick up this one and this one and that's the enter now you want to make sure that the degree is equal three and this is pretty big deviation there. So we want to bump up some number to get them a little bit more close to the surface. And let's click OK. So now if you click on this one, you no longer can explode it. If you hit explode it, it say cannot explode it. Single curve segments. All right. So that's perfect. We are going to create in this surface. Let's go ahead to use the surface for sweep two. And we're going to have rail one, rail two, you go from here and it up there and we creating this surface. This surface is a single surface. So if I create UV curve and click on here, hit enter, it will give me just a box right here. All right. So how can we do the box and how we are going to make the text follow it? I'm going to use my last name as a text. So I'm going to click on the text and just type it chain here and with this I do want to make them dark and heavy and then I'm going to make them about maybe high for eight and thickness for one that will be fine and let's take a look on here well this is pretty big there all right miscalculated it happens sometimes and I'm gonna come in here 
and put it here. I mean, you can put two rows if you want to, but I basically just want to show you how to do it and I'm going to make them look really dramatic. So let's go ahead to use 1D scale to make them fitting into here. And I also want to 1D scale it up so they will be really dramatic on the bottom since it's going to be narrowed down. Okay, so if you have everything, let's go ahead to align right in the centers. And we're going to make this one into a surface. So that's using this surface from planar curve. And then there will be a surface there. Double make sure that our text is actually above the surface, but actually contact the surface. So I want to make them lower a little bit like that. All right, now take a look on the perspective. And this is what we have. We are going to use the command flow along surface. And with this one, it says I wanted to have those texts hit enter. The base surface will be at this corner and the target surface will be there. Now you can see it flow to the surface really nicely. If you have the record history, you can adjust them if that work better for you. So let's turn on the signal ring and double make sure this is fitting into it. If it does fitting into it, you no longer need the surface and you can just go ahead to delete it. All right. So let's take a look also on the render view and then that will fit into the surface really nicely. I hope you enjoy this video. I share a lot more tick and trips on my member program. A small amount of the monthly payment is going to help me make more video to public for free and help more people to learn the Rhino 3D software. Hope to see you in the membership program. Thank you for watching and I will see you next.